Dreams do not have a filter that your normal, polite, waking self puts up. Welcome to the hidden meaning of dreams with Sweet Georgia Pam. It does matter what the dreamer themselves associates with those things that come up in the dream. Spiritual director, dream expert, author, and educator, Sweet Georgia Pam is here to remind us that dreams are the answer. They're always with you. They know you better than you know yourself, and they're always trying to tell you the truth. There's some back and forth here between you and some awareness. And now your host, Melissa Carter. So I'm going to share one of my dreams today. And it's, it's, oh gosh, how old is it now? It's almost 20 years old. Okay. Okay. But it was one of the most impressive dreams that uh, in my life. And mm-hmm. I was sitting on a couch watching television and I was sitting next to a woman because I date women on the couch with me. And so I was in the feel that we were uh, not intimate yet but that we were getting to know each other and I wanted to get to know her better. And I thought I would try by putting my arm around her. Okay. Mm -hmm. I put my arm around her on the couch. Again, I'm not seeing her yet. I I sense her body next to me, Mm -hmm. put my arm around her. And as I feel her, I feel a kind of a dead sensation of her being dead. Mm -hmm. And she turned to look at me and it was my dead self looking back at me. (laughs) <laughs> that's the dream wow because i remember okay. the sensation of how she yeah. felt dense yeah. but lifeless mm. and then when i turned to look like what you know what yes is this yes it was me deceased looking mm. at myself oh man that's like mythical is what that feels like Right. So, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, now that's the main part of the dream. I remember, I can't remember if I believe that once I saw myself, I believe that she tried to choke me or mm. do harm to me. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that's another element of the dream. Okay. That's I almost said that's great. Actually, <laughs> To be oh, really great. careful. <laughs> it's always fun to see it to meet your corpse. It's awesome. <laughs> I do I do have to be careful because I have such a like big optimistic joyful energy. <laughs> well, and you love I doing do. this. Well, you love doing I, this. I love this. This is like so that's why I said this is like mythic, like archetypal energy. Like mm-hmm. this has some real um profound imagery. And I'm like, oh, I love it. Forgetting that you actually experienced this dream in the like. (laughs) And it might've been traumatic. No, I I did. Terror that comes up. Quite startled. I mean, it was because I, you know, I've been the person that always remembered my dreams. I was, when I was a kid, I'd wake up and tell my mother about my dreams at breakfast. So dreams uh, have, I've always been comfortable with them. It's one of the Hmm. reasons I think Pam and I get along so well is because I love her interpretations and I just love dreams. And, I, and I'm the person that if I, if I don't get enough sleep or I don't get a dream, if I don't remember a dream, then mm-hmm. I'm frustrated. Like, I don't like mm-hmm. that. But anyway, but this one, you know, I woke up quite uh, unsettled. Obviously, So I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to hurt your feelings by digging into the gore no, a little bit. Again, I it guess. was 20 years ago and no, yeah. you're not going to yeah. no. Well, because the first thing I want to do is ask you a few clarifying questions, right? So I'm trying mm-hmm. to paint this picture like a movie in my head. So if you don't remember the answers to these, that's fine. But any details you can fill in will help. Okay. You're sitting on the couch watching TV. Is there lighting in the room or is it? From what I remember, it was, it it was an evening. I felt like the, the illumination mostly came from the television. Okay. Any idea what was on the television? I don't remember being able to see it. I think it was glared. Okay. Right. So the, the detail, there was no detail in the program. Okay. Which side of you is the woman sitting on? On my left side. She's on your left. Okay. And for some reason, when I picture this dream, you guys are like shoulder to shoulder, but that doesn't. That's that's exactly right. We were sitting shoulder to shoulder and then I decided to put my arm around her. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Because I'm smooth. Because I'm smooth. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, I know what to do in this situation. You know, I'm not sure if I did the whole stretch before I did it, but um, (laughs) because I'm cool like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. (laughs) And so you reach around. Okay. Um, 
Is there any detail about what you or she is wearing? You or you and the, the person beside you are wearing. I don't remember. I just, I know it, I don't remember it being thick. So it's almost like summer wear, right? Okay. So it was warmer yeah. weather wear. Okay. Um, but I don't, you know, I just remember it being kind of a thin shirt. I was more focused on, again, the dense, it's hard to describe, but it was like lifeless density of her shoulder back, my shoulder back as I put my arm around her. So was it was, it, but there was thin material, it was thin material okay. of the, of the shirt. So, because I was able to sense yeah, her back. Now, when you turned and looked, mm-hmm. did she also turn and look, are you guys facing each other? Like yes. looking in a mirror? Yes. I mean, okay. Yes. When I turned to look, she turned to look. I think I probably beat her by a second to look. So when I turned, then that w- I physically saw her turn Duh. to look at me. And it was, <laughs> it was me. <laughs> the call came from inside the house. <laughs> oh God. I'm just like in it. I'm like, no, no. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to jump around. Here we go. And also, and let me also say too, with the harming me, mm-hmm. we were standing So it's almost one of those things where I don't remember how we got from sitting on the couch to standing, but I, I believe we were standing at the point of her trying to do harm for me. So I harm to me. So I think I was backing, I was in a defensive position mode at that point. Woo. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. So, um, the first, so sitting on a couch, watching TV is zoning out. So metaphorically you were zoned out in your life at that time Mm -hmm. to something going on. Right. And, and then you were, uh, I'm going to use the very old fashioned word of courting. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's right. My lady. You're courting courting this part of yourself. Okay. (laughs) You are in a courtship, which is like, which is to say, there's a little bit of temptation or there's a little bit of dancing going on between you and some aspect of your life is starting to, there's some back and forth here between you and some awareness that is surfacing from your unconscious. Okay. Mm -hmm. Courting. (laughs) Well, but I mean, there's no word that because dating is such a generic word Mm -hmm. courting is the point you're not there yet you haven't kissed yet you haven't held hands yet you're like you're you know back in the day you had uh chaperones like you know (laughs) there's no chaperones in my dress yes yes there's like right that's exactly what it's a courtship okay and then you make a move so that feels like an important part because again if you if we take this as all aspects of the dream or aspects of myself, then you or your ego makes a move. So your waking self in real life has made some move that brings this to surface, that brings this truth to the light. Okay. And once you see what, it, that it's you who is dead, this dead version of you, then that dead version of you reacts like a zombie it was almost like like your perspective is what started this wrestling Mm -hmm. for you to defend yourself against your own self the specifics in a dream are really important so for me it's the uh, it's the cold dead skin Mm -hmm. that is the message something is dying something has died and so Now you have to face and wrestle with what has died. This is where I'm going to let you know what was happening in my real life around this dream. So I had this dream and soon after I was diagnosed with kidney disease. That's a true story. So I love this dream because of what happened. My body was telling me that something indeed had, I, I had to have a kidney transplant a few years after that. You and had I had to... no idea. Oh my God. And so the, one of the reasons I wanted to share this dream too, is because again, not every dream is literal, but I do think that it's worth paying attention to because it could save your life. You know, it, it, the dream is not the reason I went to the doctor, but I just remember yeah. b- having chills at, yeah. wait a second, my body 
told me. Yeah. And, you know, I averted just fully succumbing to the zombie. There is a book out there from one of the well-known dream authors and researchers called Dreams That Saved Our Lives. And it is Mm. that. It is a collection of people who had dreams that alerted them to something going on within their body that they then went and got checked out and it was a lifesaver. So the thing that I want to point out about that, and especially the, the fact that you had that experience to look back on and go, oh, my body is why my body is communicating with me is that your unconscious, your dreaming mind is tapping into all sorts of resources you're not aware of. Body signals is one of those sources. I know a friend of mine whose daughter had a childhood seizure and a week before, so at the, nothing happened as a result, she's okay. She's actually going into studying neurology now, thank God, um, in college. But my friend told me later that uh, a week before she had dreamt that her daughter was, there was an earthquake and her daughter climbed into the root ball of a tree and hid while this earthquake was going on. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a week before that same child had had a very unexpected seizure. Wow. So we tap into that stuff and being in that regular dialogue with your dreams and writing them down and having a dream journal will help you keep tabs on what your unconscious knows Mm -hmm. and is sharing with you. And dreams are not meant to scare you. They're there to help you. So even if it's a case like in mine and in your friend's child's case, like, Mm -hmm. you know, because again, I, I haven't had my dreams interpreted until I got to know Pam but I always engaged with them. Right. And I Mm -hmm. found, and it was only in hindsight, I was like, Oh, but it's, I love the learning and awareness of it. The fact Mm -hmm. that again, your body's always trying to tell you something. I used to give speeches about my condition is 20 years this year. So yay. If I have a transplant, congratulations. Thank you. I would give speeches and I would say that when it came to symptoms, you know, because a lot Mm -hmm. of people, when they get symptoms physically, they get angry at their body People who I knew who who were on dialysis and who, you know, they were angry that their body was failing them. And, Mm -hmm. and my point was always your body's telling you something it's, it's begging something it's asking something. It's not trying to punish you. So your dreams are not trying to punish you. They're trying to help you. I mean, so I, I think for a lot of people who have maybe been beaten down by life to reverse that mentality of what life is trying to do for you Mm -hmm. uh, might help them. And dreams Mm -hmm. are a part of that. Yes. And if it's showing up in your dreams, it's showing up elsewhere. Dreams are not the only source of inner guidance or of information, Mm -hmm. but they certainly are a really powerful, useful source when you know how to not take them literally and how to understand what it is that they're trying to show you. Well, if you want to take advantage of being able to work with your dreams, Pam is here for you. SweetGeorgiaPam.com is the website where you can find out all that information. And like we said, there's some free stuff on there just for you. Thank you for listening to the podcast. A downloadable guide that's free called Six Nights to Better Dream Recall. Also a free half hour Zoom session uh, with Pam. You can direct message her on social media as well. Sweet George Pam and leave a description of your dreams in the comments below here on YouTube. And we'd love to be able to to interpret your dream all right pam thank you as always my love sweet dreams everybody the content in this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only pam muller is not a licensed mental health professional if you or someone you know suffers from severe persistent nightmares please seek medical help